I am talking to assembly member Chad Mays, who comes out of the Coachella Valley Palm Desert area and is an independent in the California assembly and a good friend. And I very much value his opinion. And I'm here to talk with him about the challenge that activists face when they have to build support, bipartisan support, but I should kind of reframe it and, and really say it's more than bipartisan support. It's also moderate support for legislation because, you know, you got to get those votes and not everyone's going to agree with everything you're trying to do. And it's actually a really bad idea to just go with the people that are your solid votes and never try to build support for folks who don't necessarily agree. And so I see this more as beyond bipartisan, so more so as ideologically, and how do we do that in a way that's like helpful, polite, diplomatic, actually productive, and doesn't just sort of fall apart into, you know, the type of political discourse that we have these days. So thank you for joining me. I'm super grateful. And do you want to just take a moment to just share a little bit about how you got to the assembly and what, you know, where you are right now. Sure. Yeah. I'd be happy, uh, happy to do that. Yeah. So I've been, I've been in the legislature for seven years. I got elected in, in, in 2014 in the 42nd assembly district, include the cities in both Riverside and San Bernardino uh, County. And we collectively, the two county region, we, we call uh, the Inland Empire. And there are two uh, seats, actually. There's only, a, there's one Senator and there's one assembly member that crossed uh, county, county boundaries. And so I care about issues in both Riverside uh, and, and San Bernardino County and our whole region at, at large. Got elected uh, in, in 2014 and nine months later became the Assembly Republican leader, which was uh, a little interesting. I was in my freshman year and my colleagues very quickly said, hey, Chad, you're you're going to be it. You're going to be next. And then I served as Republican lead for, for a couple of years. And I don't want to go into all of this, but after a couple of years, I ended up not being the, the assembly Republican leader. I served uh, a couple more uh, years and then decided to run uh, for reelection as, as an independent. Uh, and I have been become fully convinced that uh, the polarization uh, in America, including California, is, uh, is creating a great, great harm. And I have, you know, beyond getting to sort of the day-to-day legislation, -day legislation done. I have this mission that I want to uh, get rid of our, uh, get rid of our polarization. I do think that our parties and our, 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 our teams, or, you know, a lot of people talk about tribes uh, these days that this us versus them mentality is really toxic towards uh, trying to, uh, to get good public policy uh, done. So we're working on that before uh, the legislature, I got I was on the Yucca Valley. I grew up in a, a small town in Yucca Valley. I got elected to the city council when I was 25 years old. I served council for a little bit more than, than eight years. And then also served for four years as a chief of staff to a county supervisor in San Bernardino County prior to getting elected to, to the assembly. Awesome. So I purposefully actually invited you to this conversation because of your background with being the minority leader and then not being it anymore. And yeah you know, exactly, you and I've talked about this numerous times, but how do we not degenerate into sound bites, sound bites and knee-jerk reactions? And so I'm a community activist, I, I am an organizer, and I'm passionate about, you know, an issue, this is what I want to do, and the people who represent me may be Republicans or opposite party of my, myself. And I'm trying to basically have an honest dialogue with them and avoid those sort of kind of problems from happening. And just starting from the perspective of what makes for a good discussion? Like, how do you get past that? What would you recommend that folks be focusing on? Well, I mean, I want to just be real about it. It has become uh, very difficult these days uh, to to do that because of the polarization. You know, I've I've come to this conclusion at one point in time in my life, I believed that individuals would have their own belief system, the way that the government is, the role of government, what the way policy sh should be. And then they would go associate with other people that were like them to try to get an advocate on behalf of getting that that, that done. I, I don't know if I believe that much any longer. It seems like now people will choose their identity first. You know, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I'm a conservative Republican, I'm a progressive Democrat. 
And then after they've decided what their identity is, or maybe who their family or their friends are, they'll start off a conversation with, well, as a Republican, yeah. uh, bah, 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 I believe in, in whatever. And they've actually um, chosen their identity before uh, their, their, their belief system. So one thing I would suggest to you, if you were a, a conservative Republican and you wanted to talk to a progressive Democrat, the last thing that you should do is start off with is I make, as a conservative Republican, I'm asking you to, because unfortunately uh, people will right away uh, right. begin to have sort of their walls up. It's sort of those, those teams. Well, if you're for this, I must be against, uh, be, right. be, be right. against that. Right. Uh, so the first thing I think is, is to build trust after you've, you've built some trust. And, and the only way you can build trust is with time. You've got to spend a lot of time with, 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 with individuals, whether you're advocating at a city council, for, you know, at the halls of uh, at city hall, or if you're uh, advocating a member of the county board of supervisors, or you're advocating in front of a, the legislature, you have to spend time. And the more time that you're with somebody, then the more trust then is, is, is built. And you can begin to break down those barriers of, you know, I am a progressive Democrat, or I am a conservative a Republican and people will begin to see you as an individual. Mm. And if you if you've built trust, uh, which yeah. is that you mean not not only you know uh, say what you mean, but you mean what you say. Yeah. Um, if you built trust, and then over yeah. time people begin to to listen to you, and that's it at, at any level of government. That's oh that's wow, step that, one. that is so important. I actually talk a lot about that being being there all the time, being there year round, not just showing up when there's some big controversial thing happening and you need a vote, right? Like show up and be that person who goes to the board hearings that goes to the city council meetings. Even if you're just in the audience and doing public comment, it's like the face, right? Yeah. Like I, I know that you're legitimate because I see you and you care and you care enough to show up, right? Yeah. And creating that visibility at the local level. I think that's awesome. Have you ever had an experience where you were converted or changed in terms of your opinion on something because of that, like you kind of were like, you know, you created that, felt that trust level, or you were just, you know, maybe approached in a really genuine way and said, I'm, I'm actually going to challenge myself to rethink what I think about something. Yeah, no, it, it uh, happens, uh, happens regularly for me. You know, I, I will take a meeting from, from anybody as long as my schedule permits and if they can come in and whether spending 15 minutes or 30 minutes, uh, by the way, I prefer being in person, mm -hmm. you know, Zoom meeting are what we've had to, to come to, right. uh, to deal with uh, right. over uh, the pandemic, but I prefer in-person meetings or in-person conversations or for that matter, if I'm walking out of the the Capitol building and somebody stops me. And if I've got a few minutes and they ask me a question, I'll have a conversation with, with them. You know, I find the more that I, that, that I, I talk to folks, the more that I uh, learn uh, and the better legislator uh, that I am, I can think of, of multiple examples uh, of where somebody, whether it's a member who's come in to, to talk to me about their bill, um, or it's been an advocate that's come in to talk to me about their bill. And so, you know, it's interesting. I'm not sure that I understood what the, that bill did this, mm. did X, Y, or Z. Uh, there's also been, and, and I'll leave the bill number out and in even the industry, but I, I remember vividly that there was a one particular bill that was, uh, you know, sort of a high stakes bill for, for one group of, of advocates, I'll say that. And I actually was in support of, actually, I'm sorry, I was in opposition uh, to the, the bill. And it was actually my sixth or seventh meeting with the opponents of the bill mm -hmm. that when I asked some probing questions and the response that I got back from them, mm. uh, when they left the office, I said to my staff, I said, hey, guys, we got a problem. I'm not opposed to this bill. I'm uh, actually in support of this bill. Yes. And, and, and the reason for it was mm -hmm. the, the, that this particular group of, uh, of advocates were, 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 were being unfair and it turned out that the author of the bill was being very sincere in their effort uh, to try to solve, uh, solve a, a, a question. So it's interesting the way that that works sometimes, because on its face, you would think to yourself, oh, I'm, I'm absolutely opposed uh, to this bill, or I'm absolutely supported because you only get yeah. one little piece of the, uh, of the total argument. Legislators are thousands of bills, right. thousands of bills. Right. And every legislator does not have time to, to one, read all the bills, read the analysis on all the bills, and then, and then talk to the supporters and talk to the opponents. Right. And right. we don't. So you have your sort of niches that you get involved in that you, that, that you, that you deal with, right. you become subject matter experts on those, uh, on those particular. And so as an advocate, the part of your job in building trust, by the way, 
is when you're going and talking to a member, you know, again, whether it's a city council member or it's a, a member of the county board of supervisors, or it's a school board member, or it's a legislator, is it's also uh, important for you to build trust is not only tell your, your story of why you think that bill should be done, but also tell your, if, if you're in support, tell the opposition story yes. um, as well and say, you're yes. probably going to hear this. Brilliant uh, tactic. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very smart. Uh, very smart because again, it, it, it helps you build trust and actually you'll, the, the, that particular member will engage with you. So what are, what do you see advocates doing or not doing that they should be doing to successfully win votes across the aisle. And I'm going to speak now as so Democrats or, or, or progressive liberal groups who are outreaching to you or your colleagues, what are they not doing that you would say, change that approach? Like start here. Don't, don't, go in that direction. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, the first thing I would say is it's it's important when sitting with a, a legislator, a policymaker, it's important to understand uh, where they're coming from uh, and what their understanding is of any particular policy. Mm -hmm. Don't make the assumption uh, that uh, every legislator knows about as much about a, a bill or a policy as you do. And so often uh, what will end up happening is somebody will come in, they'll sit down or we'll do now a Zoom meeting and they'll just, they'll say, hey, I'm here to talk to you, A, B or S, B, uh, one, yeah. four, five, whatever, the, whatever it might right, be. Right, right. And then they're going to go in and they'll just start talking. Mm -hmm. And I don't know anything about that bill at all, none. Yeah. But as I'm listening to this uh, person advocate, right, to to you know to push why they're supportive or maybe even they're they're, they're in opposition to it. If I don't have sort of a basis of yeah. it, and you're you're talking in language that I don't understand, right, you've right. you've lost me. So right. it's always uh, important uh, to be able to ask questions to start off with and say, you know, can I again? You will use SB nine nine nine. So is there is there a, do you understand SB 999? Do you understand mm -hmm. the author? Has the author talked to you? So ask questions yeah, um, yeah. before uh, going down your, 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 your spiel. It's super important to be able to understand, you know, know your audience, know, you know, there's that old thing in sales, know your customer, you know, right. and be able to understand who, what they're thinking about that and what's yeah. important to them before you start just talking. So good. Research who the heck they are, what committees do they sit on? What exposure have they had to this issue? Absolutely. I think part of it, at least from what I understand, is my own experience is, you know, when you start doing this work, it's intimidating, right? Like you get in a room with a legislator and you're all like, you know, it's almost like information overload yourself and you just start kind of, and I think what you're saying and what I'm hearing you say is like, you're really going in almost like taking a pause and like reading the room <laughs> and yeah. responding, right? Like, where is this person at and where do I go? Because interestingly, so I did an interview with assembly member Bernard Horvath. She said the same thing, but from the opposite perspective, which is people who come and talk to me is that as though I don't know what climate change is and they don't realize that I sit on a select committee on sea level rise and they don't even need to spend time talking about that. They can launch into whatever the, the technical issue is that they, they want to talk about. And it's the same, it's just the flip side, which is knowing who you're talking to and yeah. what, what, where they're at. Right? Well, right. And don't waste, so don't waste time. If you got a 30 minute meeting, you don't go. spend 25 minutes talking about something that one, the person has no idea what you're talking about or spend 25 minutes of your of your time talking about something the person already knows. Right, um, there's right, no, right. there's no reason for that. That's so, you know, it should be a conversation and it should go both ways. It shouldn't just be one, uh, one sided. You're a bit of a unicorn in the legislature. I will tell you, I have not encountered many open minds in the way that you, you possess an open mind to conversation that you're not either familiar with or, you know, immediately on board with. Other folks may not be that way. And so going back to the building trust, I think that's key. And, you know, having that person see you over time and, and recognize that you're legitimate, you, you actually come out of their community, their district. But what, what if you can't get past that? What if there's just no trust building to be had? What if that person is just not necessarily open-minded? Do we give up on that? Yeah, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe you do, because yeah. at some point there's only so much 
There's only so much time. You know, what's, what's more frustrating to me, and again, by the way, I am also an advocate when I'm inside the building, right? So if I've got, if I'm as a legislator, I might have a bill or somebody else's bill that I, that I care a lot about. Mm. Um, and I'm going to try to go build, help build coalitions of, for that. Yeah. And one of the things that is uh, incredibly frustrating and, you know, because Christine, you've been around and you've seen things for a long time, you'll actually um, hear it every once in a while in public, but you hear it an awful lot in, in, in private. You know, I've, I've actually seen this happen in committee where a particular member will say, this is the worst bill that I've ever seen, but I'm voting for it today. Or you'll hear somebody say that this is the best bill uh, that I've ever seen. But I can't get there today. I've seen mm -hmm. I've seen that happen mm -hmm. in committee and it's public. What's more um, challenging is the private conversations for legislators who have built trust with their colleagues. There th there will be a much more open conversations privately. And what you'll get is, hey man, I'm there with you on that bill. My district that's always something I love. My my district in quotes won't let me you know vote for that or my district says something uh, different or what they're saying is this stakeholder group or that stakeholder group is very important to them it has a scorecard that that would suggest that they can't vote uh, one way or the other even though they know that it's good public policy um, yeah. they just think maybe politically it would be too difficult or too challenging um, for them to be able to to vote yes or to vote a vote no on any given given bill so it's as frustrating so my point is back to those advocates that yeah. say do you give up you know you never want to give up you always want to give it a shot but also understand that there's only so much time and right. uh, you're not going to get everybody you're yeah. just you're just not yeah what do you see as the big ideological battles we're going to be talking about or looking at next year you know, California is an interesting um, place because if you talk about ideological battles, there really isn't any more. There, there are no real ideological battles uh, any, any longer because the 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 war, if you will, is won. You know, in California, as you know, the the Democrats control 61 seats in the Assembly, if my numbers are right, and they control 31 seats over in the Senate, if I remember that uh, that correctly. And so when you talk about ideological battles, there might be some little skirmishes or some dust-ups, if you will, but th there really is no battle. I think the war has already been, uh, the war has already been, been, been won. Um, and I, and think I push the, back and say, sure. when I say ideological, I mean within the Democratic caucus, mm. within, yeah. you know, because it is moderate progressive. This is, yeah, you're, you're totally right about that. So I guess I should say more nuanced. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the, I mean, look, I think one of the, the, I mean, this is just something that, that I would take, you know, if you think about climate change as a, as an example, you have, I mean, it's the, the policy, you know, the, the issue is actually uh, fairly easy to understand. Yeah. Uh, for a very long time, we've been taking carbon out of the, the ground and we've yeah. been putting that carbon into the atmosphere. And uh, we did it in the form of, of, of what ended up being very cheap energy. And there was this negative externality that we had that for a long time, people didn't know. Of course, now we know that people, that, that folks actually actually did know, they did know, and then didn't do anything about yeah. it because, you know, it was a cost to be able to deal, to deal with it. Right. So you have this, this question then in regards to forms of energy, and there's those, uh, those, those battle lines that are drawn that, that there's some folks that say, uh, we should stop all oil drilling, no more, um, you know, no more coal, no more oil, no more natural gas, that we should just go hundred percent renewable. Well, there's a problem. So from a, from a justice perspective, you could think that makes a lot of, a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the problem is, well, the costs um, are, are incredible. Uh, and frankly, we're not yet there to be able to have 100% renewable for the demand of electricity uh, or for energy, not electricity, but for, for, for energy. Mm -hmm. And so there is some talk between those that, that will we'll talk about justice and those that will mm -hmm. be like, well, there's justice and there's also economic justice. And there's some ideological lines that are drawn that, that that are that are drawn there. You saw that, by the way, within the 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 Democratic Party of California, yep. Yep. Uh, talking very, you know, just a few days ago, right. uh, in regards to the the Democratic Party uh, should accept uh, money from from oil or not. So I think that is one of those things that's going to continue on uh, yeah. into into the next year or the next couple couple of years. Yeah, I totally agree. I th and it's probably needs to come to a head. I mean truthfully, in my opinion, because the urgency of the situation requires 
urgency and action on a pretty big scale. But I, I hear you and I agree, right? The challenge is some people don't want to, they are concerned with balance and with economic impact and all, all of those other factors, which I'm not discounting. I just, that's a whole other conversation. Um, what do you think about not taking money from certain industries? Like yeah, I have. I actually have a very, and I've, I've been this way from uh, the very beginning. I actually find, l- let me back up. I actually do think that there is, that for some, for some members, uh, that there can be a corrupting influence with uh, with, with campaign uh, contributions. There can uh-huh. be, and you see it. I don't need to, to say what they are because you can you can often often see it. For me, the policy uh, has been very clear, which is if anybody wants to support, then they can support. I don't have any limits at all. Even if uh-huh. I have some very strong opinions uh-huh. uh, about something, whether I'm in support of something, uh-huh. and and those who are in opposition to that uh, want to be uh, want to be supportive. I have, I have none. And the, and the argument is, is if you start saying to yourself that there's this industry or that industry or this group or that group, then what you're saying is that everybody else that I am receiving um, uh, money from, that I'm with them 100%. And, and, and to me, I have, I just have some, some deep philosophical problems with, with that because I, you know, sort of follow the Jess Unruh line of, of, of politics. I don't want to repeat what, what he said, because it's a bit, no, I know we're being recorded and my mom would not be very happy if I if I said it, but I think that is, I think that, that one of the biggest problems, frankly, in, in politics today uh, are elected officials who, who violate the just unruh rule. And that if there are people that are, are supportive of them, they won't get sideways uh, with them, even if they know that it's, uh, that it's wrong. And, and, and I think that's the, frankly, the problem It's not the, it's not the, uh, the contribution itself. It's the, it, it's allowing that corrupt, that, that corrupting influence right. to have the an impact on your decision-making. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So if you were to give one piece of actionable advice, right? Like I'm listening, I stop listening to this and I go do something for an advocate to make them, you know, position them better to be better, you know, more successful. What, what would that be? Just the, the, whatever it, whatever, whatever it is that you care deeply about, if it's an issue that you, that you believe in, then you got to do the work and there's no easy way to be able to do it. You have to be able to spend a lot of time. And when you are pushing for one particular thing in any given year, a legislative session that you fail, I don't think that you can't come back again and, mm. and, 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 and do it again. I've seen that time after time that there'll be some particular policy that in one particular year will will fail, and then the next year, you know, the governor will be veto it, or maybe he doesn't get out of the assembly. Then you come back and you try, uh, you, yeah. you try again. Is that uh, if it's something that you deeply believe in, uh, then you you got to continue to keep pushing. You can't quit, and you got to continue to keep having the conversation. You also uh, have to. There's nothing wrong if you want, you know, a whole loaf, right? You've heard this, mm-hmm. um, and you only get forty percent of the loaf now. Nothing wrong with that. You come the back. enemy, what is it, the perfect the enemy of the good? Yeah. So yeah. If, if right now you can only get 10% of the loaf, and then a year later you come back and get 20% of the loaf, you get it right at some point in time, you're still going to get the whole loaf. Uh, there's mm. no reason why uh, you shouldn't. There's a lot of advocates that think if I don't get 100%, then I don't want anything. Uh, well, yeah. good for you uh, because the, the odds are that you're not going to get 100%. You don't so have anything now. <laughs> right, you're going right. to get nothing. Yeah. Yeah. You walk away empty handed. Yeah, that is awesome. And this has been super great because you are seeing like just really clear, you know, messages, lessons, what folks should be thinking about and just cutting through, I don't know, a lot of the sort of noise around advocacy and, you know, just what is a good tactic, what's a good strategy, how, how to move this conversation forward or their conversation forward. So any last thoughts? And I'm so happy to have you here. Yeah, no, thanks so much for, for doing this. I, I appreciate it. I hope I'm not the last one uh, of these conversations. No, Hopefully I have another one tomorrow. What? You've got, you've got a handful, a uh, handful more. And just the last thing is, you know, for anybody to reach out to me again, would love to be able to hear from you. Don't, don't make the assumption, especially for somebody like me that they're not going to hear you out. And as you know, uh, early on, Christina, you might've remembered my first year, you, you and a group of, uh, of folks came in my office. And you were sort of like, oh, we'll give it a shot. And then I ended up agreeing with you. And uh, which was, I think, which was different than 
uh, the Republican consultants and virtually everybody else uh, then. Uh, that, was in, your first, in, that, was, that was your first conflict. <laughs> in, my, in, in, my, in my caucus. And uh, frankly, you guys were right on that. And so just, you know, don't make the assumption that, that uh, people won't hear you out uh, and that uh, it has an impact. It does have an impact. So thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you cool. very much. Great. All right. Well, thanks, Christina. Thank you.